This is part two of my V2 DLG mods and assembly. Out of the box, the V2 is 1185mm long. In the manual, it says it's 1135mm long. And it's about two inches longer than most other DLGs on the market. So I thought I'd, I'd cut 50mm off the overall length. I start by marking the centre line so I know where to cut the slot to put the rudder back in. Then cut off the 50mm using a Dremel and a cut off disc. Then it's just a matter of cracking the cut off boom away from the rudder. That comes away very easily without doing too much damage to the rudder. And now I'm cutting the slot to refit the rudder back into the boom. I left myself a little bit of wiggle room so that I can make sure that the rudder ends up perfectly vertical. I tried to make my own rudder, but I couldn't make it as light or as stiff as the original, so that one's going back on. Now I'm setting up the plane so that the wings are perfectly level. The idea for this jig came from a Radio Carbon Arts hand launch masterclass DVD, which is well worth viewing. And I'm just using 5 minute epoxy to fix the rudder in place. You could use CA, but I prefer 5 minute epoxy. It gives me a little bit more time to work with it. And because I know the wings are dead level, I can set up the rudder so that it's perfectly perpendicular and vertical. And getting rid of any excess glue, don't want any extra weight on the tail. And finally eyeballing it to make sure I haven't made any silly mistakes. Now before gluing the elevator pedestal on, it's a good time to form the exit holes for the pull strings. This step's a little bit scary because the boom down the back is very thin and delicate and you have to drill horrible big holes in it. I'm using some stiff plastic tubing for the pull string to run through so that it doesn't abrade on the carbon fibre. And I'm using a reasonable amount of epoxy glue in this area because I want to sort of regain some of the strength that I've taken out by drilling the hole. And then finally taping it flat so that it holds the angle that I want. And repeating that same process for the elevator pull string. Now it's time to fit the elevator pedestal. And it's the wrong shape to glue onto the boom so you need to uh, sand it down so that it conforms a bit more tightly. Work out where it wants to be positioned so that the elevator doesn't clash with the rudder. Sand it up and glue it on. As well as gluing, these tail joins will be reinforced with fiberglass cloth. Now it's time for the most crucial step of gluing the elevator on. And I've started by taping it down to a cutting mat with nice long um, alignment marks so that I can get everything square and, and set up uh, correctly. Now I want the wing and the elevator to be both at zero angle of incidence so I made sure the table is level in both directions and then using my homemade incidence meter I jacked up the front of the uh, plane so that the wing is at zero angle of incidence and I know that the elevator is at zero, so now I can uh, glue the elevator on. So before the glue sets, I'm checking all those levels again, just to make sure. Now 
And finally, checking by eye, just to make sure that I haven't made any silly mistakes. Some of my more talented flying friends come in to check on progress. And the final part is to reinforce those joins with fiberglass cloth and finishing resin. So I'm masking off the area just so that I don't make too much of a mess. Paint on some finishing resin, lay the cloth onto the resin and then dab it with the brush to wet it out and get rid of any bubbles and then blot off the excess. Repeat for the other side of the rudder join and for the elevator joins as well. And the last thing is to protect the leading edges a little bit with some uh, lightweight tape. Thanks to Melbourne for this tip.